Hey everybody, welcome to eBike Tips. Now, in 2020, we tested a lot of e-bikes and over the festive period, we've been mainlining mince pies and sherry, putting them into some sort of order and we've picked out the best for you. So this is our e-bike of the year awards. We've picked out a winner in six categories. So there's a winner for city bikes, cargo bikes, folding bikes, mountain bikes, road and gravel bikes, and budget bikes. So without further ado, let's get on to the awards. Now it goes without saying that our list of winners isn't gonna be the same as yours. So tell us what your favorite e-bike of the year is. Put it in the comments below. Let's get the discussion going. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos from us. Right, let's dive in. Okay, first up is the City Bikes, and our City Bike of the Year is the Cube Kathmandu Hybrid. We tested the EXC625 version, which in the UK retails for £2,999. Now, Cube makes about a million different e-bikes, and if you look at their website, you'll see that the Kathmandu Hybrid is available in 36 different builds. So that's three different frame styles in 12 different levels of kit. So there should be something there for everybody, uh, whether you're on a slightly lower budget or whether you're looking at one of the higher end models like we reviewed. Now the Kathmandu EXC625 sits quite near the top of the range and that means you're getting loads of good kit. Firstly and foremostly, you're getting Bosch's Generation 4 Performance Line CX motor, which is one of the best motors out there. And you're never gonna want for power whether you're pootling around the city or whether you're pointing it across a continent. The bike also uses Bosch's PowerTube 625 battery. That's 625 watt hours, clues in the name, and it gives the bike a really good range, especially in the low power modes. You get a Shimano Diori XT transmission, that's 12 speed, and it's good for cruising around or getting up even the steepest hills. And you get Schwalbe's excellent and very durable Marathon Plus tire. Those tires are gonna soak up a lot of the road chatter, but you also get a suspension seat post and a suspension fork thrown in for when things get a little bit rougher. As a day-to-day -day city companion, it's ideal. And if you fancy going out on longer leisure rides or even on a multi-day tour, then that good quality motor and the high spec kit are gonna make your riding a joy. Now, at a penny under three grand in the UK, the Kathmandu Hybrid EXC65 is not a cheap bike. But there are lots of bikes in the Kathmandu range and under that there's also the Touring range which gives you the option to pick a more budget model if you prefer. And all of the Cube bikes are really good value. So that's the Cube Kathmandu Hybrid EXC625. That's our city e-bike of the year. Let's move on to cargo. The e-bike tips cargo e-bike of the year is the Turn GSD. We tested the GSD S10 version, which starts in the UK at £4,499. This is the second generation of the Turn GSD, and the bike has been updated in some key areas. One of those is the motor. The bike's been upgraded to Bosch's new cargo line motor, which is one of the most powerful EU-friendly pedelec motors out there. Now, where the GSD really scores is in practicality and in versatility. So it's a long tail cargo bike built around 20 inch wheels. And that means you get loads of room for cargo and for kids, but also it means that it's no longer than a normal bike so you can stick it in your shed. The Turn GSD is rated to carry 200 kilos. That's 120 kilos for the rider and 80 kilos of cargo. And there's a huge range of accessories so you can chop and change between cargo and kids and you can get new stuff as your family grows or as you ditch a car. In terms of carrying, there's pretty much everything you can think of. There are pannier bags, and there's child seats and bench seats for adults, and there's even a clubhouse fort that will keep two kids dry, whatever the weather. Yes, it's an expensive bike, but with the high quality frame and motor system and components, it's a really sound investment. Now, the bike that we tested, the S10, is the cheapest of the three builds at £4,499 in the UK. That doesn't include any bags or other carrying, so you need to add those on. And some of the accessories, like a spare battery or the clubhouse fort that we mentioned earlier, can up the cost considerably. Even though the S10 is the cheapest build, it's probably the one that we'd go for. Um, the derailleur transmission is lighter and it's more efficient than the hub gears on the more expensive bikes. So that's our e-cargo bike of the year, the Turn GSD. Probably the most practical bike there is. Let's move on to something completely different, road and gravel. Our road and gravel e-bike of the year is the Ribble CGR ALE, which starts at £2,399. Now, if you think it's a bit odd to lump all those road and gravel bikes into one category, then that's just a testament to how good the Ribble CGR ALE is. It's a great bike both on 
and off the road. Now, when we reviewed this bike on off-road CC, we reviewed it mostly as an off-roader. The build was a single rim transmission. It had 650 wheels and big tires. But there's a load of more road-oriented stock builds as well with 700C wheels, smaller tires, and double chain rings at the front. And if none of the stock builds float your boat, then one of the great things about Ribble is that you can go onto their bike builder and spec it up exactly how you want. You can even spec a custom color choice if you wanted to, although that will hike up the price considerably. However you build it, the CGR ALE is a really tidy looking bike. It uses Marla's e-bike motion X35 system, uh, which is an internal battery and a very small hub motor and one control button on the top tube. And most people wouldn't even be able to tell that it was an e-bike. It's not the most powerful system out there, but it is a good match for this bike where you're going to be riding above the assistance limit a lot of the time, especially when you're on the tarmac. Whatever surface you're riding on, it's a very capable bike. It effortlessly eats up miles on the tarmac and once you hit the off-road, it's very stable and very reassuring. There's not much within the sphere of road and gravel riding that the CGR ALE couldn't do. We've seen people ride from Land's End to John O'Groats on this bike, we've seen people do bike packing tours on it, and really anything's possible. So another really good e-bike from Ribble. This isn't the first time that Ribble have featured in our awards. Last year, their Endurance SLE, a carbon road bike, won the overall e-bike of the year award. This bike isn't as light or as quick as that, but it makes up for it by being more versatile. So that's the Ribble CGR ALE. It's our e-road and gravel bike of the year. And let's move on now to our budget bike. And our budget e-bike of the year is the Rad Power Rad Runner, which starts at £1,199. Now the Rad Power Rad Runner is a bike that's pretty much perfect for city living. It's compact and it's fun, and it can carry cargo and people with ease. And at not much over a grand, it's a bit of a bargain as well. With those 20 inch wheels and the big cow horn bars, it's got a bit of a BMX feel to it and it is a fun bike to ride. It's reasonably upright, so it's good for riding around in the city and the big 3.3 inch tires take a bit of sting out of the potholes and the bumps along the way. Now, the motor system in the Rad Runner is pretty straightforward. It's a 48 volt Bafang rear hub motor and there's a 672 watt hour battery in the frame behind the seat post. That's really good capacity for a bike of this price. It's not the most complicated system out there and you wouldn't expect that for this money, but the motor's got plenty of power and it's great for carrying cargo or people around town. And carrying is one of the Rad Runner's strong points. Now, it doesn't look like a cargo bike, but the rear rack is integrated and it has a capacity of 55 kilos. So that means you can easily take a child or a small adult on it. You can fit a child seat or a bench seat or a rack and there are cargo panniers and there's even a centrally mounted console box. So you can spec it up however you like. There's a couple of gripes with the build. The saddle is awful, but it's easily replaced and so are the cheap plastic pedals. Now, Rad Power sell direct, so there's a bit of assembly required, but once you've got your bike up and running, it's a really good city companion. So that's our budget e-bike of the year, the Rad Power Rad Runner. Uh, solid, it's useful, and it's easily configurable for your daily life. Right, let's move on to mountain bikes, and a few rungs up the price ladder, our e-mountain bike of the year is the Specialized Turbo Levo SL Comp, £6,250. Now this Specialized certainly is an interesting bike. It might seem to the casual observer that the e-mountain bike market is mostly an arms race with the motors getting more and more powerful, but the Turbo Levo SL is plowing a different furrow. Specialized has teamed up with German tech giant Marla for this. Uh, Marla, who make the e-bike motion X35 system. And together they've developed a new motor, the SL 1.1. Currently, that's exclusive to Specialized and it's used in their road and in their hybrid and now in their mountain bike ranges. Um, it's not as powerful as the Bros motor that Specialized uses in most of its uh, turbo bikes, but it's got a smooth power delivery and crucially, a lighter weight, which means it's really good for a bike like this, which is meant as a range extender rather than giving full assistance all the time. The Turbo Levo SL Comp is great on flowing single track and the geometry lends itself to the kind of all day ride where a bit of assistance from the motor can be a real help at times. Um, it's Bluetooth enabled and Specialized has a mission control app which allows you to have really granular control over what the motor is doing and also the battery management. It allows you to manage the amount of charge you've got left so you should never run out on a ride. 
add, even if you do, it's a 19 kilo bike. So not especially heavy for an e-mountain bike and you should be able to get home under your own steam. Now, if the 300 watt hour internal battery doesn't have enough capacity for you for the kind of range that you want, then there's also a range extender which adds another 160 watt hours on top to let you go a little bit further. Now, if you point the Turbo Levo SL Comp at anything really rowdy, then you know, you'll find the limits of the Fox 34 fork and the other components on the bike are down a rung or two from what you'd normally expect at this price to make room in the budget for the motor. But if you're looking for a rig that will help you out on those long day rides or just get you to the top of your favorite descent nice and fresh so you can hammer it down, then this is a great choice. So that's our e-mountain bike of the year, the Specialized Turbo Levo SL Comp. Let's move on to our final award for folding bike. And this time it goes to a conversion kit, the Cytron X Brompton, which retails at £1,145. Now, electric folding bikes have two mutually exclusive goals, really. You want them to be compact enough and light enough that you can sling them in the back of a car or take them on the tube. And you also want them to be powerful enough that when the road goes uphill, you get some proper help. Everyone's more or less agreed that in terms of the compactness of the fold, the Brompton is impossible to beat. And the Citronix system adds nothing to that footprint, so the bike's just the same size when folded, and it only adds 3.2 kilos to the weight. So you still get a lightweight, compact folding bike. The C1 system is really high quality, so there's a 180 watt hour bottle battery that mounts on the top of the frame, and that drives a hub motor in the front hub, which has been slimmed down to get in that narrow Brompton fork. The Citronix system uses a clever sensor that looks for movement at the sprocket rather than the cranks, and the whole system, including the lights, is controlled just by a single button on the handlebars. The feel of the Citronix system is really good. There's plenty of power in the front hub motor, and also it's really well controlled by that rear sprocket sensor. The button on the handlebars is pretty intuitive, needs a little bit of a learning curve. Once you get there, it's really, really easy to use. If you need that full power, then it's there, of course, but you can also program the Cytronix system so that you can get exactly the amount of power you need for your riding, and that will help you extend the life of that battery, which obviously isn't the biggest. Now, the C1 system is a retrofit system, of course, so uh, you'll need your own Brompton, and then you'll need the £1,145 for the system itself. For an extra £145, you can send your bike off to Cytronix, and they will fit it for you in as neat a way as possible, which is probably a good option if you're all thumbs. Overall, it's a really good system and it's probably the best option if you want a genuinely compact, genuinely light folding e-bike. So that's the Citronix Brompton and that's the end of our awards. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about any of the bikes in this awards program, stick them in the comments below, we'll answer them for you. And if you've got any suggestions of your own for bikes we should test in 2021, put those down there too. Don't forget to subscribe for more like this on eBike Tips and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.